Where's my purse? Welcome to the chaos, lovelies. So my oldest kid is off for two weeks at an art institute, and today's his birthday. (laughs) I already super miss him, and it's been less than a week. But getting him ready to go was wild. (laughs) So he and I are super similar. We're both very obviously neurospicy, you know? (laughs) In some ways, this really helps me parent him because I understand his reactions to things like I know kind of where these things are coming from because I can relate and empathize, you know. But if we are both stressed out about something, it can be really tough. (laughs) Now, I work really, really hard to keep myself like extra calm in those situations. I have to be very aware of the fact that, like, he's got all of this anxious energy going on and I have to be really careful to not, like, absorb it or feed into it. And that can be very difficult, especially if I am also stressed out. But I really just, I don't want to escalate his anxiety at all because he's doing all these new things. Like, this is so nerve-wracking. And, you know, I went when I was his age and it's it's scary, you know, and I didn't want to make it worse. So I was really trying to be calm. Also, as someone who was parentified as a child, I really want to ensure that my kid is allowed to be a kid. And he did turn 17 today, but there's just so much adulthood, you know, and I just want my kids to enjoy their youth. You know, and I'm not talking about in anything that's like wildly indulgent or anything. Just I want them to be able to be normal kids, you know. So I was once again perusing an article on (laughs) attitudemagazine.com about women with ADHD, because now that I'm starting to figure out that that's what's going on, I'm just absorbing all the information I can get. One of the symptoms that they listed related so closely to something that has kind of been on my mind lately. The symptom is being thought of as selfish because you don't write thank you notes or send birthday cards. So this relates to me both with the CPTSD and the ADHD. Um, So it's a double whammy. (laughs) This actually happened after my wedding. Now, my husband and I, we are not traditional people, but we did kind of do the wedding thing, you know, and our families very generously gave us gifts. Now, Honestly, I had no idea about gift-giving etiquette, like, at all. This is yet another thing that I guess I was somehow supposed to figure out on my own, even though I don't know how you would figure that out on your own. (laughs) And keep in mind that this is before, like, YouTube. So unless I wanted to read a book about it or, you know, have a relative tell me this very simple thing, maybe I would have known then, you know? (laughs) And it does make total sense to send a thank you card, but some things are just not obvious to me, which is a hard thing to accept. I used to try really, really hard to deny ever being confused uh, because, you know, being confused meant you were dumb, you know. But now, like, I just see that I'm wired differently and, you know, nobody's perfect. Everybody has their weaknesses and... Some things just aren't obvious. (laughs) I have to say I'm still working on accepting this one. It's tough, but anyway. I had no clue at the time. (laughs) I was so just unknowingly naive. I had no idea what I didn't know. (laughs) It's so frustrating. I have to admit that I am kind of haunted by the person that I used to be. I really try to remember that I didn't know any better at the time, but... What a fucking handicap to give to someone, especially to your own kids. Like, it made my life exponentially more difficult. Still kind of does, but I'm figuring things out slowly. (laughs) 
Anyway, the ADHD comes in later because my husband's family had told him to send thank you cards. But let's just say I definitely have ADHD, and I'm pretty sure he does too. (laughs) We drove cross-country for our honeymoon, and the thank you cards were completely forgotten. Until a year later, which is apparently the time limit you have to send thank you cards. Had no idea about that either. But at the year mark is when all the relatives who had never told me anything about any of this started commenting about how rude it was that we didn't send thank you cards. Thanks, guys. Super helpful. (laughs) So that's a fun one. (laughs) On a lighter note, I would like to discuss purses for a moment. The other day I was thinking about the various purses and bags that I have had over the years and how I can remember certain ones at specific points in my life. They're almost sometimes like mile markers. For example, when I was a sophomore in college, I met my future husband. And on our first date, I remember having this cute little brown faux suede crossbody bag. It was kind of small, and it had a flap with fringe. Okay, so brown suede fringe. I was definitely having a hippie moment at the time. (laughs) Anyway, I remember this because I was super nervous. Hello, anxiety and unacknowledged, untreated anxiety. (laughs) And I managed, when I got into his car at the very beginning of our date, to sit on my bag and rip one end of the strap out of the purse. And it was a cheap bag. So it's not surprising that it ripped and it was not made in a way where you could fix it either, you know? And I was bummed because I really did love that bag. And I was also just mortified because obviously I can't make a single mistake in front of someone if I want them to like me, right? (laughs) Otherwise, he might know that I'm an awful person. Now, This sounds wild even to me, but that was my brain back then, and honestly, for almost all of my life. Luckily, my husband is oblivious to most things, especially when he's also super nervous, and he did not care at all about my purse. I don't think he even noticed that I had a purse, (laughs) and I didn't even end up needing it, so it didn't matter at all. (laughs) And honestly, that might have been the first moment that I felt like a hint of safety. I definitely liked him immediately, and I will always think of that purse when I think of our first date. I loved the purse. I love him more. (laughs) So my darling husband has also been trying to get me to explore Reddit for a while now, and uh, I know I'm behind on this one, but it was just because for a while I was really trying to keep my sphere just incredibly positive, uplifting, nothing that could possibly be negative, and I had heard that there was a lot of negative stuff on Reddit. I mean, it's the internet, everything has negative aspects to it, but I just avoided it for a long time. So I finally ventured on there not too long ago, and honestly, it's been pretty good. It's kind of like TikTok, it has helped me find people who have been through the same things that I have. But it can be kind of intense at times. Some of the things that people post about are so, like, almost identical to my experience that it almost can be triggering. Well, also, you know, somebody can relate to you, but, oh, God, it can just put you back in that place, you know? I was trying to explain this to my husband, and he said something about it being, like, isn't it good to have people out there that are like me. And yes, it totally is. I mean, I definitely find comfort in it, even while being just so sad that other people have been through this because it's, it sucks. (laughs) Yeah, so it's complex. It sucks to know that it's not just me being a problem, as I've been told, because if that's the case, then there's nothing I can do about it to make it go away. I guess if that was the case, I probably would have fixed it decades ago because it hasn't been working ever. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so that was a tough one. (laughs) 
But I will say that there's a lot of supportive and uplifting posts on Reddit, too. Recently, I was reading a post about how people with ADHD have this feeling of waiting for their special life. It's just like expected that they are going to have some sort of incredible existence. And, you know, they discussed how you have to learn to celebrate the mundane and the routine because there's beauty there, too. And honestly, it's a more realistic expectation. Now, it makes me super uncomfortable to admit this, but I definitely have that feeling. I always have. I've always felt like I was supposed to be doing something. And who knows? It's definitely driven me down a certain path. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm finding that all this ADHD stuff is like kind of a bummer, but then also kind of a superpower. I hate using that, but it, it kind of is. Like it's just a special power, I guess. Um, and maybe that's where the special life thing comes from. I don't know. I'm really, really trying to focus on just enjoying every day and being present because honestly, this life is so much better than I ever thought I would have. And that's pretty incredible. So it's worth celebrating. Plus, I also like really, truly believe that you can make anything special if you approach it in the right way. And this is another thing that I kind of think is like a superpower is like, that the ADHD brain is definitely creative enough to just bring magic to everyday life. I absolutely love my creative side. She is my lifeline. <laughs> I don't think given the choice at this point, if someone said you can take away the ADHD and have like a normal brain, I don't think I'd want that. And I think that's my fear with medication too. I don't know how it affects creativity. I don't know how it would affect me. <laughs> I don't know. I definitely love my creative side. And if ADHD has driven me down the path to where I am now, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I love it. So what do you guys do that brings you joy and satisfaction? Whatever it is, I hope that you try to make it a part of your everyday life. I know that when I started writing every day, it not only greatly improved my writing, but it also brought me an immense amount of peace just to have time dedicated every day to doing something that I just truly enjoyed that was just for me, you know? And for someone with a chaotic mind, peace is golden. I mean, if you know, you know. <laughs> I think everyone knows that peace is golden, but especially if your brain never shuts up, peace is incredible. <laughs> I hope you can find some peace this week, lovelies. And I hope you can make it a beautiful one. And I hope your purse is right where you left it. Rap Media Production.